this video, I want to talk about keeping a good file hierarchy for naming your uh, pixel work. So I'm using Asprite and uh, I'm, right now I'm using my uh, Windows computer. Whenever I do any of my art stuff, I, well, I, that varies, but just, just know that I'm using uh, Windows, Windows 10. So this is like the file hierarchy of uh, Windows 10. So I have uh, an Asprite file and basically uh, this is just the default. Uh, when you save your file, uh, you know, you could, if you want to reopen it in uh, Asprite, uh, you could either use the .ase or the .asprite format. These are just file formats that you can use to reopen your work in uh, Asprite and also saves all of your uh, configuration, I believe, or it saves the configuration specific to the work that you were doing in the program. Um, yeah, these, I know this is, this confused me at first too. I mean, I'm, I kind of assumed that they were the same thing, although sometimes when it comes to assumptions like that, they could be dangerous, but not in this sense. So I'm using just the Asprite because I kind of like to know that it, it's like that. So I made a folder called um, Assets. And in that folder, um, I made two folders, one called Sprite 0001 and another folder called Sprite 0002. I just made these uh, folders. I'm gonna put uh, this Sprite in here, but I do want to make a note. So I just kept the folder name the same thing as the Asprite project name. It could be helpful to choose a name that uh, that you know. So like you know that like, you know, you can make it like, say if it was a tree, you could say forest tree something or like, like level one or, you know, something like that. It all depends how deep you want to uh, drill into your asset organization whether it be for art purposes or for a video game, I think a lot of it starts with good file hierarchy, uh, folder and file hierarchy and organization. So to be honest, if you were say making a game, you probably wanna make a folder called level one. Like you make the top folder would be called assets. Then you can make a folder called, well, I don't know, tutorial maybe would be the best first one. Um, you make a folder called tutorial then you put all the assets that you need for the tutorial within that folder. And then you name the asset like uh, tree, blah, 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 you know, something like that. But for this purpose, I just chose a folder called assets, Sprite 0001 and Sprite 0002, but I'm just gonna use uh, the Sprite 0001 folder. I'm saving it. I don't know what I, don't know what I just clicked, um, but I saved it in the folder. And when I go to uh, that folder, um, I'm gonna drag it over here. Oop, sorry, my program lagged for a second. So here we are. And the Asprite uh, file is saved here. But do note, this is just the Asprite. So this is so you can reference your own work, uh, whatever may be stored in there. It could be helpful that you also export your uh, palettes in Asprite, I believe you can export your palettes. So like if you used a specific palette for it, it could be helpful to keep it all organized within here so you could refer back to it, um, whether it be for consistency throughout your work or just for your own reference purposes. Because I think it's incredibly important that you keep everything organized for the thing you were working on. Because if, say, say if you made it, but, um, but you didn't save what color palette you used along with it. Well, you the good news is since you're dealing with pixels, you could always use the eyedropper tool and try to reverse engineer the pixel colors that you used for it. But it could be a lot more helpful to just export the specific color palette that you used for that sprite and keep it all within this folder instead. Um, I, I think that that's probably the best way to uh, go about doing this. So yeah, I saved that file in there. Um, I'm just saving the file again. Another quick gotcha is, you know, my the asset folder. So I'm gonna close um, Asprite real quick. And uh, where is my computer mouse? I'm gonna bring that folder here. This folder, <coughs> this folder, this folder only exists on uh, my computer. So the thing to keep in mind, um, I always recommend that you back up your work somehow, whether it be through an external SSD 
um, or like a cloud software, like either Google Drive or Dropbox or something like that. Um, personally, I'd recommend what I would call um, a shotgun approach. <laughs> and that's like, you have, you have it on your computer, you have it on an external SSD, and you also have it in the cloud. Um, some programs, like I think probably Google Drive and uh, Dropbox, they, they even have like a desktop app that you can just save everything in directly. So the second you save it, it gets saved to the cloud. So it's like it exists on your computer and also in the cloud at the same time, just so that you have all of your work uh, organized. So yeah, I have this folder. I open it and I have uh, the two folders here. I go in here. I'm going to open up Asaprite and it opens it. Perfect. We have it all. We have it all figured out <laughs> to an extent. Um, but yeah, so that's uh, what I would recommend for dealing with file hierarchy. And always do keep in mind, you may have to reorganize it, it uh, so in some point in time, but it's incredibly important to be aware of this. I would say also in this folder, you would also keep um, the exported assets. Uh, like let's say you draw, let's say, oops. Ah, sorry, I didn't mean to zoom in that much. <laughs> Let's say uh, you draw a ball, right? I'm going to quickly draw a ball, really sloppy ball. Um, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to export that ball. Well, I haven't gone into details about these. There are various ways to export it, uh, depending on how you want to do it. But whether it be a sprite sheet or a tile set, which is kind of a newer feature, um, you know, you just... I would say that when you do export it, you all save it in that folder as well. So let me, uh, the other important thing, always be aware of uh, lossy and lossless file formats. Um, PNG is lossless, so nothing will be lost when you export it. Um, yeah, there are a lot of settings that come with it. Um... Oops, so another mistake I did. Um, okay, so sorry, I forgot about this in the export settings. So uh, I'm not gonna export the background layer. That was just like a way to show, um, just to show the current one. Ugh, what am I doing wrong? I'm doing something wrong, but do note, maybe if I export it as a sprite sheet. Um... <laughs> I'm doing something wrong, but uh, just note that make sure you export it as a PNG. I think that that's probably the best way to uh, go about it. Oops, I keep doing this. But yeah, basically just note that when you do export this uh, thing as a ping or PNG, however you wanna say it, keep it within that folder. So keep your artwork organized so you can refer back to it. Make sure you also export your color palettes as well to the same area. And also make sure that you back it up within the cloud or your own uh, external hard drive. And I will tell you this, lucky for you, pixel art is pretty low when it comes to its file size. Um, we don't have to deal with as many limitations when it comes to today. So like, if you get, like, if you get a hard drive, um, you'll probably never fill it. I mean, maybe you will, but like, it'll last for a really long time if you have an external SSD or something like that, because pixel art, just wait, the files on it are just like so low, usually in kilobytes, they probably could get larger depending on the resolution you want to do, or if you do, if you have larger uh, sprite sheets or whatnot, but yeah, be aware of file hierarchy. I think it's something that very few people really uh, think about that much. And I'll tell you this, I really had to learn to appreciate, uh, it took me a long time to appreciate file, hi file hierarchy. Uh, I've learned about it from structuring my own applications and code. And when you use assets in your own code, uh, it's really helpful to keep yourself organized because the second you have to go back to it and you're like, where the heck is this thing? <laughs> Which I have done myself. Um, you learn from your mistakes and you try to stick to an organized and logical um, hierarchy. The only other thing that I'll tell you, uh, there's a thing called uh, camel casing. When you name your files, I always recommend that you start off with a lowercase letter, say an A, and let's say 
Um, and after that, every word, you use like a, a capital letter. Like let's say it's a tree. So I'm kind of running out of space here. Lowercase a and a capital T, then lowercase r, lowercase e, lowercase e. Uh, I always recommend you keep files named in camel casing, just sticking to regular alphabet characters. Uh, do note that different programs behave differently with uh, different file names. So there's a chance that like, if you use a weird character in your file name, like it may, it may disappear. It may not work in your program. Your program may run into an error. If you, let's say you have, let's say you have a program and it, like it, uh, it tries to read a file with like, I don't know. It, uh, it, it may not read the file correctly. It may say it can't find it. It could crash your program. It's because some characters on your keyboard um, or just in the whole uh, Unicode or ASCII are reserved for certain purposes. So if you try to use a certain key or a certain uh, character, I should have said character, it won't allow you to use it or it may allow you to use it and you may run into problems uh, down in the future. The other thing with that is I don't like to go technical, but sometimes different operating systems handle uh, file name special characters differently. So it's like, oh, it may work on Windows, but the second you put your program on a Mac, it crashes because you used a weird character that you shouldn't have in the first place. So do be aware of that. Um, coming from my point of view, I've, I've fought with people <laughs> in, in a verbal way talking about telling them not to use special characters and file names, but they're like, no, I like it. <laughs> I'm like, what? Well, it could cause issues. And they're like, but it worked before. I'm like, it may not work next time. The second you change it to a different operating system or update it or, you know, who knows what. Um, sorry, I don't like to talk like that, but just know that uh, keep it simple, name your file stuff carefully, avoid special characters, use camel casing, and just stick to regular alphabet characters. As annoying as that is, and I know maybe you want to name something with a special character, don't do it for your sake because you could run into weird issues. There's another type of file called a dot file, which is a file that begins with a period. Uh, sometimes those are meant to be used by operating systems specifically or mostly for configuration of some sort or like storing um, passwords and whatnot. And they're usually invisible to the user. So there, you can make a file um, that's <laughs> that basically is invisible to, on the user interface side, and you can only view it if you're uh, trying to view it through command line. And sometimes, even if you're on command line, you have to type a special uh, you have to type a special signal to list hidden files. <laughs> so yeah, I don't want to. I know I probably I probably have gone down the tangent here of just um, total bizarreness when it comes to um, talking about files and file hierarchy and all of that, but. All of this stuff really matters to you for your organization, whether you're saving your own work or whether you're bringing your work on another computer or whether you're working with a programmer or, you know, for, for some other type of art or video game, not to say the two are different or one the same. Um, well, you get what I'm trying to say. I mean, every, just be aware of all the purposes it can serve. Uh, and as they always say, keep it simple, stupid. And I am stupid. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, keep, keep it simple, as they say. Always keep it simple. It helps to, I tried to draw a pair of lips, but it didn't work out as how I wanted it to. <laughs> but yeah, keep it simple, stupid. Um, that's, that's what I would say when it comes to this. But yeah, no one, I feel like no one really thinks about this. I feel like uh, most people just store their stuff however they feel then. Uh, down the line, it becomes a problem when they can't find the file that they're looking for. Um, keeping this hierarchy and whatnot could also help you when you're searching for your own work. Um, you know, obviously, before I talked about naming a folder called, you know, like tutorial level or level one or area one or tutorial area, etc. But when you do that, you know uh, exactly where to look for the assets that you're working with rather than having just everything stored in the same folder and then you're like, scrolling for hour minutes or hours probably minutes to try to find your asset file to change and yeah it becomes a whole mess so keep it simple stupid keep yourself organized this is something that i feel like no one no one really knows and the only reason well i mean i'm pretty sure some people know but for the most part the, the reason why i stress upon it so much is because um i have some experience writing applications and um i've 
I've run into issues in which I, uh, I've, I've had to look through stuff. I'm like, where the heck did I put this? I said that already, but I really have gone through the pain of doing that. Um, I've worked with other programmers and their code and, uh, they didn't care about file hierarchy and they didn't care about documenting where their files are. And I had the pain of having to find them and fix them. And like, when something goes wrong, I was the one who had to find it. I wasn't the original programmer. So it's like, I didn't know what they did and where they hid the files. So I learned a lot in how to navigate, um, navigate stuff through command line or surfing <laughs> surfing operating systems maybe that's not the right way to say it surfing the file hierarchy that's probably the better way to say it um but yeah think things to be aware of it's really important it may not be as important to you um depending on what you're doing or whether if you're also if you're a programmer this is really important if not you will well i hope you can learn from my mistakes so you don't have to go through the same process that i did but just note that there were many painful days I've had with this and, you know, organizing your code this way, whether, or organizing your files, your art, pixels, whatever you want to call it, code, etc. It's really important. I can't, I can't stress this enough. Um, oh, darn, if I had to give just a little history about myself, uh, it would be, I worked with, uh, different, in some of my programs, which I talk about before, like, uh, draw some thumbtastic, some of my early applications, I just used, um, the native code and the native workings of, um, oh shoot, what's it called again? I can't believe I'm forgetting it. Electron. I use Electron JS to, uh, design my applications. Well, not design, just the back end, not the back end, well, kind of just the application itself. Then I use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to, uh, do all the inner workings. And when I did a lot of that, uh, the hierarchy was a mess. And eventually I learned to do uh, refactoring, which is basically, basically reworking all the files and keeping everything organized and keeping, you know, if it, if it goes together, it stays in the same folder. And by doing that, I was able to organize myself better. I know that if I needed to fix something, I know exactly where to go to, to fix it. And I don't have to look at all the files at once. I know that if I need to add a feature, I need to go to this exact area. So it, it really helps when you're going back to your work to learn about it, to do it, to, um, you know, it's basically documenting yourself. And I think about as we step into the future, when it comes to um, a lot of code, whether you're using artificial intelligence or something like some other type of thing, like, or like a AI tool that helps you as you go. Um, I'm not saying for art, I mean, depend, depending on how you want to go. Um, but I'm saying code wise, like there are things called like a co-pilot that help you uh, do it as you go. I feel like that that will help you with code, but I always wonder, will that help you with file organization as well? Because I always wonder like, how much control will it have? Will you, will the, will you still have to be aware of uh, file hierarchy and what to name files and whatnot? So yeah, be aware of this, keep it in the back of your head, keep yourself organized, and I talked long enough. <laughs> so yeah, I hope this video helps you. Um, if you are interested about other topics that I talk about in Aspirate, uh, please look in the playlist that I have called Pixels. God, I hope I don't change that playlist in the future. <laughs> I hope I don't change the name. If I do, I'll probably just call that folder like Asabrite or something instead. But yeah, I hope this video uh, helps you understand um, a little bit about this important topic that I feel like either doesn't get talked about as much or is only known obscurely by programmers who have gone through um, the school of hard knocks when it comes to this, um, cause I've gone through terrible days having to decipher, uh, the file hier hierarchy of other programmers and what they do. And obviously sometimes people try the best, try their best and it does work out. Other times they don't give to, um, I don't want to finish that sentence, but they don't need, you, you could guess what I'm saying. They don't care to fix it. So, and then I have to deal with the pain. So yeah, it's good when you're working on your own stuff because you could keep yourself organized right at the get-go. So yeah, thank you for listening. Um, if you like my channel, please do look around. Sometimes I cover drawing topics as well, uh, like drawing digitally. I do cover a lot of stuff like this as well. But yeah, thank you for listening. Bye.